always excited to see everybody here. And then, um, you know, um, we have our discussion here on Friday night instead of just watching TV or YouTube at home, right? So we get um, to connect with each other and I really love the connection. So today we are um, connecting with friends, yeah, um, Taiwan, Japan, and maybe even India too. So most of you already know me, but for those of you who are new, uh, my name is Wendy Chan. And I've been in this business uh, with New Skin for about four years, and I have achieved my Emerald Director title, so which is just um, three ranks away from the top. But anyways, I'm working my way up there. But today's topic is a bit special, okay? Uh, I'm sure everybody can feel that Halloween is just around the corner. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit and uh, what it's like depending, you know, uh, where you're from or where you live. So uh, we have a few friends, okay, a few friends sharing for us today um, for their experience too. And another interesting thing about Halloween is that um, how it can change for you, okay, whether you're a single or if you're a parent, I think the, um, you know, the point of view is quite different. So uh, how does, you know, how does everybody feel about Halloween today? I don't know. I mean, how about in Taiwan? Do you feel um, a lot of decoration? Do you feel it on the street? You know, what does it mean to you? Yeah. Another Not beer? <laughs> what? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, you don't feel it in Taiwan? Uh, no? Yeah. Yes, not yet. How about Japan? Anybody from Japan wants to, you know, say something? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Shota, do you feel it? What? Sorry, I, I miss it. Sorry. Um, uh, Halloween. Do you feel the Halloween spirits in Tokyo right now? Uh, not yet. Like, oh, not uh, yet. Every year, like in Shibuya, like everyone wears the costume. You know, right? Mm -hmm. That that was so hell, actually. Yeah. Every year, I, I don't want to go there though. <laughs> That's kind of like one of the event, like for Japanese, I guess. Not really, like, uh, not like a. Uh, culture things it's like uh, not like a uh, religion things that is one of the events i guess for japanese okay but i don't feel yet yeah oh they don't have the decoration or anything yeah no yeah like but gradually maybe yeah right. in a supermarket or something yes 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 thank you thank you for sharing and then okay i think right here we um there's a lot of um things going on decorations especially for kids you know a lot of parties and stuff but um, yeah, for myself, like uh, as a parent, as a mom right now, you know, Halloween is a bit of contradiction for me now, okay? Uh, we love it and we also hate it because uh, we love seeing the excitement uh, in our kids and, um, but we also worry about all that sugar and the effect that it has to the kids too, especially on their teeth, right? So whether um, you're curious about Halloween's history or just love the spooky vibes so let's explore together today okay and uh, let's start by looking at where halloween actually come from i mean i'm not expert in this okay i never researched it but i did some research about the origins today and i will share what i've learned okay so um it actually started does anybody know it actually started two thousand years ago can you believe it <laughs> two thousand years is so old yeah, which is really interesting because um, I had no idea that it went back that far. Okay, and this tradition actually dates back to um, ancient, uh, what is it called? Celtic, Celtic festival of um, Sao, I don't know if I pronounce it right. I think it's Sao Wang. Okay, um, it was celebrated at the end of the harvest season and marked the beginning of the winter. Okay, so that's when the time when people believe the boundary uh, between the living and the dead. Okay, so it was at its thinnest and it was celebrated around October 31st to uh, November 1st. Yes, okay, so before I go on, okay, who are the Celts? Okay, oh yeah, who are the Celts? Let me, let's take a look. I actually um found some website for it. Uh, just a sec, here you go. Okay, who are the Celts? Let's take a look at this. Uh, this one. Okay, can you see this all right? Yeah. Okay, so who are the cells here? 
So they actually went back all the way to um, Iron Age, I think. Iron Age. Actually, I think this this is pretty good um, book or is an ebook I found. Okay. So who are the cells? Let me just take a look here. Okay. So it was, um, they were the tribes, okay, and small kingdoms. They once scattered across the Western and Central Europe with um, their own language and culture. So I found the history interesting because, um, okay, if any of your kids were, like, were want to read this, I'll share the link too, okay? So I think I'll read it with my son later. But it's educational and it's easy to understand, okay? So it seems like the cells originated during the Iron Age. Yeah, it's, it's right there, the gray area, okay? The Iron Age. And then um, it started like areas such as Britain, Ireland, France, Germany, and Spain. Okay, so interesting. The South people didn't call themselves. They were actually made out of like many different groups. Okay, I, I, I don't know what they were called, but on the left here, you can explore the types of buildings they lived in. Okay, right here, if you want to click on it later, I'll, I'll give you the site. Okay, that's, I think they live, yeah, those little round houses. I think they have that in Japan too. I Somewhere I've seen that. Yeah. And then, um, so... You can see, you know, where they, where is it? What else is going to see? Oh, hold on. Buildings and the food, or what kind of work they had, okay? They trade food, I think. So this is where um, it came from, origin. And then uh, let's see this one. Oh, that's a Pope. Hold on a second. I think it's this one. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one, this picture here. Oops, what's that thing doing there? Okay, so the Sao Wang Festival was a time when the spiritual world became visible to humans and the gods, okay, enjoy playing tricks on people. So it was also when the spirits of the dead, they mingled with the living. So the cells believe that in gathering all the harvests, okay, their food by Sao Wang to protect <clears throat> from protect them from being ruined by evil or harmful spirits. So later, okay, actually, what is that thing doing? Okay, later here, the Pope, you can see the Pope down there, right there. The Pope adopted, okay, they adopted the Celtic traditions. And then it was this Pope Gregory I. He is also known as Gregory the Great, okay, who led the church from um, AD 590 to 604. Okay, this dark and supernatural festival was eventually transformed and it was given like a Christian context. Anyways, so in the 800s, the church declared, they declared that November 1st as an All Saints Day. Okay, however, the old belief um, they used to tie to the Sawan, they didn't, they didn't completely disappear, okay, because the uh, they had a powerful symbolism of um, the traveling dead. Okay, the traveling of the dead was too strong. So eventually, eventually, October 31st uh, became known as the All Hallows Eve. They call it All Hallows Eve, not Halloween yet. And it's a night to honor the saints. So which later evolved into what we call it Halloween now. Okay, and this holiday evolve into Halloween. Wait, we know today filled with costumes. Let's see, is it here? Oh yeah, right there. Okay, with the costumes and, you know, trick-or-treating and spooky fun, right? So, uh, you guys know Jack O'Lantern, right? Everybody mentioned the pumpkin, the car carved pumpkin. So this is where the pumpkin carving began. And it, what, um, it originally had religious significance, and the this Jack O'Lantern tradition involved, you know, they place the fire, which symbolized the sun's uh the sun's good magic, okay, inside a hollow, hollowed out vegetable. And it represents the harvest. And this idea was that this is a good magic. Okay, it's a good magic that it would help to preserve the harvest food through the dark half of the year. Okay. And until like the next growing season, okay then they have enough food for the community and for the food supply. Actually, uh, what's interesting that, um, did you guys know this, This um, they carve from pumpkin now. It was once used to carve, they carve it from turnips, okay, turnips, like the daikon, you know, in Japan. 
but I, I didn't know that. I thought it was all pumpkins. So it was pretty interesting. But anyways, people would place these lanterns outside their homes, just like right now. And um, it's not the kids, it's the young unmarried men. Okay, the young single men would parade they parade around the Halloween. So all, many of you will walk around right now, the kids, visiting houses, okay, and asking for gifts to uh, for the spirits. So they're asking the gifts. So this tradition of wearing costumes, actually it began in Scotland, England, okay, Scotland, where, um, yeah, the young men dressed up. So a few hundred years later, this uh, Halloween customs were brought to the US. By who? By the immigrants from Ireland. Ireland, Scotland, and the other Celtic regions. Okay, so why uh, interest, yeah, the, the turnips I was saying, when they came to US, they started to use pumpkin instead. So before US, there was they were using turnips and then you know, in Europe, and then when it come here, it was pumpkin. I forgot why, but I remember I saw it. And then, but the modern version of Halloween, right? They, right now we focus heavily on sweets actually, okay? It has um, shifted far from the roots. So now it's a celebration that leads to an overload of sugar, too much sugar for our kids. But of course, I think it's the candy industry too. Okay, it's, it's all connected, candy and the big pharma and all that. But anyways, now why do we love, still love Halloween so much, right? Because um, for the kids, it's the thrill of um, dressing up, of course, and running around and um, collecting candies, right? Well, they love the candies. So, and for the parties. So um, it's a holiday that's uh, creative and exciting, which is, I mean, in a way it's fantastic too. Uh, when, before I had a kid, well, I was still in Japan, Tokyo, right? I enjoy going to the um, parties too, yeah. But anyways, as parents, we also worry that with the, you know, too much candy and sugars that comes with it, um, how the children's uh, costume for, you know, more sugar on Halloween, it actually, um, yeah, we have most, I mean, sugar in Halloween than any other time of the year. It's not Christmas. It's not any other holiday. It's actually just Halloween. Yeah. So also, if you have uh, any parents out there, you know, is anyone worried about the candy just like me or I don't know? Yeah. And then I check if they're safe to eat too, you know, if they are suspicious and um, when we open it, if somebody has opened it already or not. But I don't know if I'm just me being too nervous or what, but um, and then, oh yeah, and I was checking, while I was checking these resources, I found that um, this news back in 1974, does anybody know this one? It's, it's pretty shocking. I mean, it was, hold on, this, yeah. Anybody know this news? 1974, yeah, this guy. Um, his name, what? Okay, so um, it was really shocking because this name, his name is Ronald Clark O'Brien. I think that's a father. And he was charged with murdering his eight-year-old son. Okay, and the son's um, on the left here is Timothy. And it was on the Halloween night, okay? And O'Brien put the, what do you call that, cyanide? Yeah, cyanide in his son's pixie stick, the pixie stick candy. I don't know this candy, actually, but um, I guess they don't have it right now, I guess. But supposedly to collect the life insurance money. So that's what he was charged for. And this case shocked the public and caused a lot of fear about the safety of the Halloween candy. And then O'Brien was uh, convicted and he was sentenced to death eventually. And then the media, you know, they started to call him the candy man. Okay, so this is, yeah, very sad. I mean, such a sad news to hear. And um, it's really hard to believe, but um, I mean, as a mother, I'm always like, you know, cautious about the candies that he brings home or even, even not on Halloween. We still have to check it, right? But most of the time, I tell him not to eat them. But in fact, I usually, you know, during the Halloween, actually, I toss, I toss them away when we get home, or uh, even while he's still out trick or treating, I just, you know, pick it up and I just throw it away when he's not looking. Okay, but he knows I don't let him eat too much candy, so uh, he doesn't ask for it later. Anyway, so he just picks a few of his favorite. That's all. So I mean, we just do trick or treat for. Them. I mean, just the fun of it, that's all, okay? So anyway, so you can check this news. It was back in 1974 though, okay? And then, um, all right. So now I would like to have my friends who, like share some um, insights. So first, let's see, can we have Shota? Shota from Japan? Yeah, yes. hello. 
and he's um he's a Ruby director. Congratulations with the company. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and from Tokyo, we actually met in Tokyo too. Yes, okay, and he leads uh, English um Philippine Philippines, I think. Yeah, Spanish yeah. team. Yes. Okay. So Shelta, welcome. Thank you for coming here. So yep. could you please tell us? Um, yeah. I mean, how do you feel about Halloween? And yeah, how is it like in Japan usually, you know, being still single? Yeah. Right, <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. Like, um, yeah, you know what I said earlier, like also like um in Halloween in Japan is like one of the events. Yeah, so we can enjoy like wearing the costume like among the friends or um we can also like it depends on the family but we can also decorate you know in the house as well like maybe but like party or something not like religious things or uh culture things not like that like a sick not sacred uh event yeah so we can just gather at with the friends and then. You know, having party. That's kind mm -hmm. of like things that we do. Yeah. Then we don't really <laughs> understand what the heroin is, right? Most of the people, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of right that's out. interesting. I think all the holidays in Japan, like they don't, you, you don't really have a religion for it, right? Even Christmas. Mm -hmm. Or anything. Anybody can sell it. Yeah, we go. Religious things like in Japan is like a new year, I guess. New mm. year. Yeah. Like we get out with the family, you know, like uh, spend time together, like, you know. And maybe like instead of like Halloween, we have the Obon. Obon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we invite the, um, how about this, like, uh, the, the people who already passed away. Ancestor, you mean? Yeah. 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 Then also like, um, not only the ancestor, yeah. We we have also really close the family that already passed away. Also, yeah. Oh. We make the some like uh the horse with the egg plants, you know, and then we put the fire in front of the house. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's kind of like that Halloween, right? So that's why it's yeah, kind of a culture we have also. But it's during the August. Not uh, October, yeah. When I was researching this, I thought it felt like a bone. Yeah. yeah, it's really close that maybe. Mm. So, are you going to have any events though for yourself for Halloween? No, <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> it's not yeah. special for us. It's well just event, you know. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You. And next, uh, George, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, George. Hello, George. He's from LA too, and he runs his own business, right? And uh, designs T-shirt. So if anybody wants some T-shirts, you can get it from George. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Work in and, progress. Like. <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you want me to share about like we were talking about the other day? Yes, or about talking... up to you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can like yeah, but like Halloween, like um, it's a new tradition that is coming out. Okay. It came like a, I would say around twenty fifty years ago. Pretty much, we celebrate the date date of the death, like people who die, some relatives. So we kind of like do offerings in the cemeteries, and the uh, and we do like a ceremony like to them and everything, the 2nd of November. Mm -hmm. So that's more traditional from Mexico. But uh, mm -hmm. Halloween has been coming to Mexico, and especially in the big cities, there has been there for a long time. But in the small towns, it's, it's getting there. Like in my my town, it came maybe around 15, 20 years ago. So now they celebrate it the same way as they do here in the US. Oh, they do the same way. Yeah. The, and uh, I... and a... oh, go ahead. Do the kids go to trick or treat? Uh they do, but pretty much what they used to do in the in the center of the town. Uh pretty much the, the government like they create like events for the kids. So everything mm -hmm. is on the center of the town. Like not many kids go outside to the houses like they do in the US. 
they try to keep it like a, like a little celebration for the whole town in the middle, like everyone gathers at the, we call it La Plaza. So everyone gathers in there and celebrates and do entertainment and things like that. La Plaza? Did you say La Plaza? Yeah. It's like the center of the town. So uh, that's how they call it, Plaza, yeah. And uh, uh, small towns in Mexico, that's how they call it. And the small, it's like a little center thing, like a kiosk thing. And then around there is a lot of gardens. And like then the, the big buildings from the government, so everything is in the very center. So la, that's, that's pretty much in little towns in Mexico. So everyone gathers there to celebrate anything. <laughs> And especially like Halloween or any tradition. I see. Yeah. But I think like, over, I mean, through the times, through, I mean, throughout many countries, it's actually, um, you know, we are, our culture is getting closer and closer, right? <laughs> yeah. I, li I like to dress up for Halloween. That's what oh. I was telling you the other day, talking about what you want me to talk. And like, yeah. sometimes we grow up and, uh, and people argue a lot, and sometimes you, you're, you're a grown up, some traders up, they say, like, you're very immature and things like that. And it's understandable, but sometimes you have to lose up from being a, a very adult from life because it's too much stress on life. Like, I would say you gotta keep that kid inside you because the mm -hmm. kid inside you, that's where it gives you the creativity. And especially, I mean, I do designing, and most of my ideas come inspired from kids. The kids have their mind, they can inspire you with things like that. Sometimes, you got a kid inside you. Sometimes you got to let it out sometimes. You kind of free your mind for stress and then the ideas come to you. Because uh, do you hear, they call it blackouts. Like sometimes when you try to uh, create something, this, you, you have this thing called blackout. Like when the ideas never come. And it's because you stress yourself too much. So nothing comes to your mind. And then when you release that mind and relax, then you come back to that creativity level, which is like what the kids have. So that's why trying to keep your kid inside sometimes, I would say 5%, it helps you to have fun and get more creative work and things like that. That's what I was trying to tell you the other day. Because people yes. forget about the kid inside you. Everyone forgets once you grow up. But you gotta, you gotta have it sometimes. You gotta release the kid. And Halloween is one of those days uh, that you gotta lose a little bit, dress up, have fun, do things like that. But okay. no, 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 just like like having fun like grown up. That is having fun like grown up, having fun like a kid. Sometimes you gotta become a kid a little bit. Sometimes. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, did you decide what you're gonna dress up as? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what are you gonna be? Mm -hmm. Uh, there is this uh, uh, I like anime, so uh, there is this uh, show we call it One Piece. There is some pirates trying to discover some treasure and things like that. So, there is this uh, Thor. Thorman, related to, they call it Zorro, which is in Mexico, we have a Zorro too. There's a character. Mm -hmm. So they, in this show, they have a Zorro. So this guy got used like a, like a, like source too. So I'm dressing up like that guy. Okay. Show us the picture next time. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get a picture. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Thank you. So we need to keep, and we need to have the kid inside. So that we can yeah, have you, you gotta let it out sometimes too. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. Okay, thank you for sharing. And then next, uh Shelby. Okay, Shelby. Uh what yeah, it's interesting because uh she's going to be sharing about <laughs> hidden truths about Halloween. That's what she wants to talk about today. Yeah. Okay. I want to know the <laughs> truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to share some <laughs> personal experience first. So Interestingly, when we first first day came to America, it's actually a couple of days prior to Halloween. So my first couple of years in the U.S., we dress up, and actually we didn't really celebrate a lot or trick or treating when we were a kid. And actually, I actually dress up more as an adult now than, than a kid before. <laughs> yeah, so like like. Jorge was saying, you know, you got to have to let it out sometimes, right? And I also noticed, you know, cause, um, because of the pop culture, um, we kind of tend to dress up from scary or spooky to superheroes and sexy, right? So as Thomas, my friend, he 
he has a lot of Superman stuff, Captain America <laughs> stuff, right? Thomas, <laughs> like the Superman ones. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he works out with the Superman T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I, do. I have a Superman and Captain America and yeah. uh, a couple villain ones. One from um, I think it's that group called I can't remember the name right now. Hydra. Oh. That's it. Nice. Oh my god. Yeah, so I also did similar research as Wendy on the salt, right? And I do want to just add a couple of things on it. The reason why we celebrate dress in costume is because the European dress up to hide themselves, you know, hide their face to become unorganized as a human from the spirit. So that's yeah. the, one of the reasons I heard, why. I heard that too. <laughs> huh? You heard of that too? Yeah. Yeah, I heard of that. Yeah, and actually, the I kind of aware of this, you know, now is like consciously aware that somehow spirit or spiritual is actually not scary. It's just a, 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 a another energy, another beings from another dimension. Like when we pass, uh, this is also a scientific fact because energy can cannot disappear. It can only transform translate or transform into a different type of energy so when we pass our body is is stays here but the spirit energy goes somewhere to become a different type of energy you, you know what i mean so that's the i think the the our society is making people especially kids when we talk about kids sometimes if the adults is not educate kids well like sweets and or Scarce, scarcity mindset, they might, you know, make kids fear of ghosts or because like, let's say we go like in high school, we went to um not scary farm, right? So they promote scary farm, scary farm. Mm -hmm. And when we grow up, we go to, let's say, Queen Mary, the Queen Horror Night. They use those scary words. And so... Bottom line is, um, you know, we want to empower, we want to keep the kids wonder, you know, like Jorge say, it, it generates uh, creativity. We don't want to limit our kids, even as adults, we don't want to limit, we don't want to be scared, we don't have, have open mindset. And so spiritual is not scary. And, you know, it opens up a lot of um, knowledge, creativities. So... Just, I'm not asking, I'm not saying don't celebrate, but celebrate with awareness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that's my share for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for your spiritual insights today. <laughs> no yeah. Problem. Okay. So it's very nice that we can get different friends to share, you know, um, just to, and get to know each other better. So um, finally, yeah. Um, did you guys know that? One quarter of all the candy sold in the U.S. is purchased for Halloween. One quarter, that's like, what, 25%, right? Oh, my God. So, um, and we know that, you know, all the sugar, post, I mean, they pose a serious risk to oral health, right? Leading to cavities and long-term dental issues. Oh, and I was just checking Elaine. Thank you, Elaine, for sharing. She shared this M&M &M thing, a package mm -hmm. that has, what, a bug inside? Oh God, I got to show this to my son again. <laughs> He'll stop eating M.A. when I show him this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's why they have the what? What is it called, Elaine? Uh, can you hear me? Do you hear me yeah. now? I hear you, uh-huh. Yeah, there's a, I think there's an artificial color called E120. Okay. And it's actually made from a bug, a red color box. So they collect trillions of box and the gliding in powder. So uh -huh. basically, you know, the those sweets in color red has this kind of E120. Oh, it's okay. made by insects. <laughs> oh. So maybe Skeeto has it too, huh? Skeetos. I think so. Yeah, yeah. they do. <laughs> There's some beetle from Mexico here. <laughs> they oh, use really? for the color. Yeah. For the color too. They they used what? to use it. They, they used to steal for other things in Mexico just to color. Uh huh. 
I see. Oops. Okay. Thank you. That's nice to know. Yeah. Okay. And so let's go back to the cavity. So yeah, how do you know how do how do we let our kids enjoy Halloween but still protect their teeth? Okay, that's where uh our AP24 anti-cavity <laughs> whitening toothpaste comes in. Okay, I actually have it with me right now. Mm -hmm. Right here. Okay. So um and then actually let me show you how good this is because it offers 24 hour solution to help prevent cavities that's why it says 24 hours and then while keeping the teeth white and strong okay so even after all those sweets it's 24 hour protection and it's perfect for families because you know it works for both kids and adults so i use this with my son together and um, it also helps with tooth decay while also whitening your teeth, okay? But it's not going to be like bleaching, like when you go to the dentist, but bleach too white for me, okay? So um, I want to show people my testimonial here. Just a second right there. Oh, this is how it looks like because I think you can't see it well there. Okay, that's how it looks like. It was selected best toothpaste overall in 2023. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then that's the next picture. And then we don't have anything that's, you know, with harsh skin. That's me. Okay. So it was before on the top. I don't think it was that yellow. But anyways, after two months, that's the one on the bottom. It got a little bit wider. Okay, that's all I can say. Yes. And I, I don't go to bleach or anything. I just use this. And that's Elaine. Okay. Who shared about the bug just right now. <laughs> yes. That's her testimonial. And then here, let's see. Okay, so what it, it has no per, peroxide or harsh chemicals, no damage uh, to enol, and it's gluten free. It's gentle on the sensitive uh, teeth. It's safe for kids. And um, also, what I love about myself, I used to have, have um my gum used to be swollen a lot. Um, what's that thing called in English? I forgot. Yeah, it's open. You guys know. The, the the when you age your gum starts to to be swelling okay so now it actually helped me a lot and then uh, I don't have that problem any anymore oh it's called uh pyro is it called pyro dental or something yeah pyro yeah Thomas yeah Thomas, Thomas. <laughs> Did I say Thomas is our vocabulary dictionary <laughs> periodontal periodontal is it <laughs> it's periodontal disease or, or periodontist I used to have that, but now now it's cured by this. Okay, thank you, thank you for helping me. <laughs> okay, and then and then, cause uh, hold on a sec. Okay, yeah. So let's go to the next one. Uh oh yeah, and you guys know Tori spelling, right? Who knows it here? Tori spelling. <laughs> that is a nine zero two one zero girl. Ah yeah, yeah. wonder. Okay. Name. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys don't know who she is, you guys are still young. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she used to be the idol for 90210. So she's actually using it too. Okay. And uh, she was a very uh, famous idol before Beverly Hills. Yes. So, okay. So as part of, oh, and also one thing that I'd like to mention is um, uh, one thing that our company, okay, actually we want to contribute to the society okay we have we do a lot of contributions and um, this is a program called force of good so we help the poor country kids um, in providing them surgeries okay to fix them I, I don't know how to call this this mouse thing but they were born like that a lot, many in Vietnam and the poor countries they don't have the money to do the surgeries so it's wonderful that when we buy the products a little percentage of goes to them, okay, and, and we have the um, surgeons to help them fix their problem, okay, so to improve the world together, well, we become healthier and have your wider teeth too, so that's why, um, and then this, you can see how, you know, um, these kids were saved, and then um, it also comes in fluoride and non-fluoride, okay, both, I use the non-fluoride, but it's all up to you but um i use a non-fluoride for a few years already right now and with my son it's not expensive anyways so please ask the person who invited you if you're interested to try one okay 
So uh, yeah, thank you all for today. And to wrap it up, so I think Halloween, you know, is a fun and exciting holiday, but tradition. But um, it can be controversial too. So um, I mean, to think about it, it's our business too, yeah. right? The industry they want to make money. So I mean, it's all up to you. But the meaning for everyone could be different depending, you know, if you're single or married, or if you have kids, or where you're located at too but no matter what okay let's have a safe and healthy halloween okay and if you guys dress up please share some pictures <laughs> next time by november yeah <laughs> okay share some videos or um yeah the superman ones thomas <laughs> superman. <laughs> okay but um thank you so thank you all for joining today and i uh, hope to see you all next time uh we, i don't know the topic yet but we actually have a list that we really want to talk about so we will announce the topic again once we decide okay so see you all next week thank you all have a wonderful bye. Week, everybody bye bye, thank you. bye. bye. Thank you. Right, have a great weekend adios you too adios. bye, bye. Yeah. bye. 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 Sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs>